This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A new report from three U.S. senators finds some 70 percent of guns seized in Mexico last year came from the United States. The report's called Halting U.S. Firearms Trafficking to Mexico and was compiled by Democratic Senators Dianne Feinstein of California, Charles Schumer of New York, Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island. It finds Mexican drug cartels are arming themselves with U.S. military-style weapons and urges a strengthening of U.S. regulations to stem the flow of guns to Mexico. Mexican President Felipe Calderón has repeatedly called for the U.S. to implement stricter firearms laws. Last year, he accused the Americans of, quote, irresponsibility on arms sales. Los Americanos empezaron a vender the armas. began to sell arms as a voracious, ambitious industry, like the American arms industry. This often provokes conflicts in countries that are poor and less developed, such as Africa, due to the sale of arms, is in a very similar situation to that which is being lived by the Mexican people. For the arms traffickers, it's a business to sell arms to criminals. And we need to mobilize not just public opinion against this, but unite with international public opinion to show the irresponsibility of the Americans, as much as it bothers them or hinders their political campaigns. That was Mexican President Felipe Calderón. Meanwhile, Congress is holding hearings this week on a once-secret U.S. government plan to encourage U.S. gun shops to sell thousands of guns to middlemen for Mexican drug cartels. The operation is called Fast and Furious. It focuses on using these middlemen to gain access to senior-level figures within Mexico's criminal organizations. Run by the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, the operations come under severe criticism since hundreds of guns that were sold to the cartels have later been found at crime scenes in both countries, including two at the murder scene of a U.S. Border Patrol agent. For more, we're going to Washington, D.C., to David Heath, senior reporter of the Center of Public Integrity, who's extensively covered Operation Fast and Furious and gun trafficking on the U.S.-Mexico border. Welcome to Democracy Now!, David. Explain Operation Fast and Furious, which is uh, going to be the focus of a hearing today in Washington. Right. Uh, beginning in, the, in late 2009, the ATF decided that they wanted to make a strategy, strategy shift in how they investigated gun running. Uh, typically what the ATF does is they focus on what's called straw buyers. These are people who are paid to go buy a gun for somebody who can't illegally go buy a gun. And typically what they are do is when, when so straw buyers buy a gun, they try to uh, confiscate them and take those weapons out. Um, that strategy, according to the, the ATF, felt that that strategy wasn't working. Thousands, tens of thousands of weapons are making their way into Mexico, so they decided that they what they wanted to do was look at the straw buyers and try to follow the the guns up the chain of command and take out an entire uh, gun running organization. And their hope was that that by doing that, that they would uh, be more effective in stemming the flow of weapons. Uh, this really goes against the culture of uh, the agents at the ATF. It goes against their training. Um, they saw weapons uh, that were essentially being allowed to hit the streets and go out, and it, it upset them. And uh, especially when two of the weapons were found at the murder scene of a Border Patrol agent who was killed. This was Brian Terry, right? Brian Terry, the U.S. Right, Border Brian Patrol Terry. agent mm -hmm. in Arizona. Yes. Talk about the hearings and their significance. I mean, we're talking about the possibility of holding the Obama administration, the Justice Department, in contempt. Yeah, that's a very unusual thing. I think it's only happened a few times in history. Uh, what ha what's happening is that there's two investigations going on right now. The uh, Inspector General of the Justice Department is investigating to see if mistakes were made in, this, in the approach that the ATF took. Um, at the same time, members of, of Congress, uh, specifically Senator Charles Grassley of Iowa and Daryl Ice of California, uh, Representative Daryl Ice of California, are also doing their own investigations into Operation Fast and Furious. And uh, I think they're going to have a hearing today to, to — and they've already released a report to show uh, essentially that uh, agents within the Phoenix office of the ATF were very upset about how this was handled. Addressing a meeting of the National Rifle Association in April, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., John Bolton argued American guns are not to blame for drug-related violence in Mexico. There are a lot of guns in Mexico in the hands of the drug cartels, absolutely. Where do they come from? 
no doubt some of them come from the United States. A lot of things in the world come from the United States. But the bulk of those guns in the hands of the drug cartels probably came from police uh, arsenals in Mexico or arsenals of the Mexican army where corrupt police officials and corrupt army officials sold them to the drug cartels agents. Or they were procured in the vast international uh, weapons market that the cartels obviously have access to. The idea that what's going on in Mexico is somehow our fault because of lax uh, gun control laws here is exactly the kind of subterfuge that the Obama administration would like to carry forward uh, in the near future to get stronger gun control laws here. That was former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton. Uh, David Heath, uh, his arguments, and especially in light of uh, this report um, that 70 percent of the guns seized in Mexico last year were from the United States. Right. The only data we have on this are the guns that are recovered by the Mexican authorities and then uh, traced by ATF. That's really the only data that exists on that. Uh, and the data is that in the last two years, uh, there were roughly 30,000 guns that Mexican authorities asked the ATF to trace. And often these, uh, the uh, Guns come with incomplete serial numbers or they're not in, inputted into the database correctly. So there's a lot of times when they can't do a match. But of those that they were, were able to trace, 70 percent of the weapons, about 20,000 weapons, uh, were traced back to the United States. There's 8,500 gun dealers along the border of Mexico. And uh, you can, of course, buy uh, assault weapons uh, and uh, very easily at any of these gun shops. I mean, very interestingly, CBS News did a big expose on Operation Fast and Furious. Um, it didn't get a lot of attention. Uh, sources told CBS News several gun shops wanted to stop the questionable sales, but the ATF, the U.S. government, you know, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, the agency, encouraged them to continue. Yeah, my understanding is that there was one gun shop that had raised questions, and there have been gun shops in the past that have been held liable for selling weapons, and so there, there are issues about that. And so uh, there was one gun shop that I know of that raised questions about selling these weapons, and the ATF, as I understand it, uh, told them that, that they were doing an investigation and that if they helped, that this would supposedly help them. Uh, trace the guns to the cartel. And then the issue of the um, the sunset of the assault weapons ban, which President Obama says he will not push to reinstate the significance of the flow of assault weapons into Mexico. Right. One of the things that hasn't gotten very much attention in this whole um, investigation is that uh, up until 2004, AK-47s were illegal in this country. Uh, there was a ban for 10 years on assault-type weapons, these military-style weapons that the drug cartels like. And so <clears throat> you've seen a dramatic increase in violence in Mexico uh, since then. You've seen, and, and these AK-47s, especially, or these 50 caliber guns, are really the weapons of choice of the drug cartels. And just in the last, uh, since 2007, you've seen about 34,000 drug-related deaths uh, caused by firearms in Mexico, 15,000 just last year. So there's been an explosion of violence in Mexico. And uh, like your report said, uh, President Calderon really blames that on the lifting of the assault weapons ban. It's fascinating to see uh, the conservative presidents of, uh, of Mexico, from Vicente Fox to Calderon, also all pushing for some kind of decriminalization or legalization of drugs at this point, uh, talking about sane drug and gun policies. Right. I mean, I think the other—I mean, what you have is you have 
he, these cart cartels are, as you know, are huge. I mean, they're, these are multi-billion dollar or organizations, and they're really equipped like armies. They have helicopters, they have grenades, they have military-style weapons. And this is all being funded by American—America's uh, appetite for illegal drugs that are coming north of the—coming uh, north to the border. And as you have these— uh, uh, drugs coming north, you have, through that same pipeline, uh, through the same people, you have guns going south. So they're really tied, very closely tied together. If you could stop uh, the flow of drugs, then you would also simultaneously be stopping the flow of guns. David Heath, I want to thank you very much for being with us, senior reporter at the Center for Public Integrity.